right, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to wrap your plaster mold in newspaper. If you don't wrap it in newspaper, then it's going to stick to your slab. So I'm just kind of wrapping it around where the newspaper ends. You want to make sure to tape the newspaper to itself. You never want to tape it to the mold. I want to just tear off any excess or just really squish down the newspaper at the bottom. I really want that to be flat because I don't want it to leave any marks in my slab. So I just like to kind of actually do a little crisscross with my tape. I just kind of make sure that there are really not many lumps or bumps. Then what you can do is just with the excess newspaper on the top, just tear it off. You want to be able to slide the plaster mold in and out. That's really important. If your plaster mold gets stuck and we have no way of getting it out, we have to sometimes cut into your mug. So before you even wrap your slab around your mold, make sure that your plaster can slide out of the newspaper. You want to have a slab that's about a quarter of an inch in thickness. It's sometimes good to even have it a little bit thinner. Um, that way it doesn't make your mug quite so heavy. But that quarter of an inch thickness is about where you want to be. So I like to just run over my slab with a metal rib. This just kind of helps finish smooth anything out, any last lumps or bumps. Now that I have my slab ready to go, I need to outline my mold. So you'll notice that it kind of rolls in a curved shape. So you want to kind of follow that curve. And I like to cut just a little bit extra on the top and bottom that just get, kind of gives me some wiggle room. All right. Then I can just cut off the excess with my needle tool. And I just want to cut this edge straight. So once I'm ready, I'm going to wrap this slab around the mold and then I'm just going to cut off the excess at the end. Where it overlaps, I need to get rid of this excess clay. So what you want to do is using your needle tool, you're holding it in a capital Q shape. I recommend writing that down in your notes so that you remember. You want it to be this way. If you cut it this way, it's going to be backwards. So holding it in that capital Q, you want to cut through both layers, but be sure not to cut too hard that you cut through and damage the plaster mold. Now you're going to remove the excess. And you'll find that your slab fits together perfectly. Now you're going to slip and score this together. So you want your slip to be about the consistency of chocolate milk. And I'm just going to come through here and I'm going to score both edges. I recommend when putting this together, if you push your thumbs together with some pressure down, you're going to find that you get fewer fingerprints. That's one of the difficulties of working with soft slabs is that they're going to show up any lumps or bumps if you're not careful. So I'm just going to kind of push this together and I really want to smooth that seam out. Now, if you used a slab with texture on it, you might find that you lose some of that texture in this joint, but it's really important that this joint is really secure. All right, once I have that joint attached, I am just going to cut off the excess. Remember that these need to be four inches in height, minimum. You can have them taller but you don't want them to be any shorter than that. So what I like to do is if I get a needle tool, before I cut the top, I like to just measure from the base, four inches, all the way around, so that I can make sure that it's even when I cut it. Once I'm ready to cut it, I can just join up those dot to dots and cut a nice, straight, even line. I recommend 
putting your scraps of slab to the side for your base. But if you find that you don't have a scrap that's big enough, you're going to just want to roll an extra slab for that. So you're just going to place your mug onto the slab. And using the needle tool, you're just going to carefully trace around. So now I'm going to cut this out. And I want to slip and score this onto the bottom of my mug. Something you want to consider is the more score marks you make, like if I score all the way through here, I've got to take more time to smooth it out because any of those cracks and crevices could be a breeding ground for bacteria. So I recommend just scoring the area that you need, kind of that quarter of an inch around the edge. And if you're worried about it, you can kind of push back the newspaper a little bit if you're worried about it kind of getting stuck in there. Now I never ever work on my table directly if I know I'm adding slip because it could cause this to stick. So I'm just going to place some paper underneath. I'm going to add my slip. I'm going to add my slip on the bottom as well. And I'm going to place this onto the base. And I want to ensure that it's really attached well. So I'm just going to really take some time to blend all of this clay and kind of push it so that it really is securely attached. The slip will make everything even more plastic and kind of delicate. So if you kind of want to wipe off some of that excess slip, you can. The key with all of this is being very delicate so that you don't create a bunch of lumps and bumps and fingerprints. All right. So now that that base is attached to the cup, I'm going to remove the mold and I'm going to remove the newspaper. If you find you have like a few little pieces of newspaper, don't panic because it'll burn off in the kiln anyway. So now we need to blend the seams. And what I like to do is just add a reinforcing coil at the bottom. So I just add some slip at the bottom. I'm not going to score it. I'm just going to slip it because this is still all plastic clay. And I'm going to roll a small coil. And I don't need the coil to be too thick because the thicker it is, the more I have to blend. So I kind of want this to be like the thickness of a needle tool. And I'm just going to carefully place this inside the cup. It gets a little bit fiddly. I'm just going to cut off the excess. So using the curved end of a spoon or a wood modeling tool, you can blend that. And at first it's going to be kind of challenging to blend. You want to really support the outside so you don't bust through that seam. And I just want to blend it so it has a nice curve at the bottom. And that there are no areas that could collect bacteria, so it's really smooth. And I take my time on this because I really do want my mug to be food safe. Remember, that's one of your objectives. Once you kind of have everything um, as smooth as possible, so I just take a damp brush and I'm just going to smooth the bottom out with some slip just to make sure there really are no lumps or bumps or cracks or crevices. I'm going to use the curved end of the wood modeling tool. Or like I say, you can use the curved end of a spoon. And I'm just going to blend the seam against the wall of the mug. Really take your time on this as well. Make sure you support that outside seam so you don't bust through it. I'm going to take the damp brush and just finish smoothing that out. I'm just going to do that along the outside edge as well. At this point, you've added slip and everything's a little bit delicate. So I recommend let it sit for a couple minutes to get leather hard before you try to smooth out this lip rim. While you're letting it sit out, 
you could start building your second mug. All right, once you let it sit out for a few minutes and it's a little bit more secure, you're gonna take slip on your fingers and you're gonna really smooth around that lip rim. You really want it to be rounded. This is really important because if it is flat at all, you're gonna find it's more challenging to drink out of. So you wanna smooth around that lip rim so that it's completely rounded. It's no longer flat on top. Once it's smooth and rounded, I recommend adding your handle before you add your decorations. If you're doing, you know, a texture on the outside that you roll through the slab roller, well, you know, your, your textures are already going to be on there. So there are several different handles that you can create. So the first handle that you can make is just a simple coil handle. It's really important, though, that when you create this coil, you create it in the shape of a carrot, where it is fat on one side and skinny on another. So I'm just going to take some clay and I'm just going to kind of squeeze it into that carrot shape to begin with. And then I'm going to roll it and as I roll it I want to keep my hands kind of at an angle. You never ever want to just attach a straight coil onto your mug because you need to have some area that is bigger at the top that can support the pressure. If you use just a coil like this, you have a smaller surface area in which you're putting all this pressure. So you wanna make sure you have one area that's slightly bigger than the bottom. So you can take your mug, and you can kind of place it on there and create, and I kind of wanna cut this a little bit at an angle. You can create kind of the shape that you like. And then I'm just gonna taper the bottom off this. And that's going to be my handle for my coil handle. The other type of handle that you can create is a slab handle. And I recommend you want a thicker slab. So I just kind of push it into about a one inch and I can use the small roller to just roll that out. So it's a thicker slab because you need to have a large surface area when you attach it. So I'm going to create just kind of one of those one handle slabs and I'm going to draw it out with my needle tool first. So once I've created my design, I'm going to use a knife and I'm going to carefully cut this out. So once I've cut it out, I've got to blend all these edges carefully because they will be sharp. If I don't blend them and make them kind of softer, it's going to be uncomfortable to use that handle. So that would be my slab mug. That's a great one for if you want to do one of those one finger handles. You, they're you know, kind of great if you like to grip your entire mug while you're drinking. The other option is a pulled handle. And this one will give you bonus points. So if you choose to make a pulled handle, you're going to start by using a coil, again, in that carrot shape. Then what you're going to do using a wet sponge, you wrap the sponge around the handle and you pull down. And with every pull, you flip the handle over and you're stretching out this handle. Once you've kind of got a thickness that you like, you're then going to cut this handle into kind of a shape that you want for your mug. So I like to place my mug to the side and then going to cut. See again how we have a larger surface area here that we're going to attach. And then you can even do fancy things. I could roll this over or you could simply just attach it. But because you've used a wet sponge, this is now very slippy. So you've got to kind of leave it in the shape that you want and let it get leather hard. So while I'm letting this get leather hard, I'm going to show you how to attach the other two types of handles. So this is, remember, my coil handle. 
And again, with the coil handle, I need an area that's slightly thicker. I'm going to place it onto my mug. And I always like to kind of look down from the top view to make sure that it's straight because you can easily put a handle. It looks straight this way, but when you look at it on the side, it's crooked. So I kind of like to align it up and make sure it's straight. I use my needle tool just to kind of mark the area that I need to score. I'm going to score both the mug and the handle. And then I'm going to add slip. Both the mug and the handle. And I really want to support the inside as I push this onto the mug. And I like to kind of just push, and I'll often leave just like a little thumbprint. It's just an aesthetic thing for me. And you want to make sure that's really secure. You're then going to take a brush and smooth this area out. Same as below to remove any excess score marks. My handle is just a little bit dry, so I'm just going to help it out a little. If you would like to, you can also add a small reinforcing coil around the top of the handle, because think about it, this is gonna take most of the pressure. So I, just to add that little bit of slip around there, and then I'm just gonna add a very thin coil all the way around. And then I just take my brush and I use my brush to kind of make sure it's attached. So then I just take my wood modeling tool and carefully blend to ensure that it's smooth and attached. You don't have to do this step. This is just if you're worried about the security of your handle. Again, I'm gonna smooth everything out using a wet brush. All right, so that was how to attach the coil handle. Similarly, for the slab handle, I'm gonna mark where I wanna place it Check from the top that it's actually straight. I'm gonna score that area. So both the mug and the handle. Add my slip. Again, supporting from the inside, I'm really going to secure that on and I'm really gonna push quite firmly from both the inside and the outside. Again, taking my brush, I just smooth out this area. I don't want any score marks left. And that would be the attachment of my slab handle. Lastly, for my pulled handle, it would be exactly the same as my coil. Mark the area, score and slip. If you would like to add a reinforcing coil, you can, but you don't have to. Really push to secure it on there while supporting the back. Same as below. Sometimes people will even take their thumb and you can kind of push and make like a little thumb divot. That's kind of nice too because then you can rest your thumb on it. Smooth the area around with the brush. And now you're ready to start decorating it. So if you're going to do additive features, now would be a good time if you're going to stamp into it. You always want to make sure to support the inside as you do that.